Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, Glenn, great to see all of you here and uh, way fun. We're, uh, the title is a little hoity-toity today. Um, it, the title is uh, Advanced Local Development with DDEV, but what we're really going to do is just explore some territory that you're interested in and we'll um, We'll go ahead and uh, take some uh, interest uh, temperature feeling on that in just a minute. Um, the first thing I think we're always supposed to say is that um, that you agree to the uh, you would, you agree to the agreement, right? And everybody does, right? So we all agree. So we've all agreed all the time, um, and we will not. We will not be mean to each other or pick on each other. So the um, so let me just share my screen right quick, and uh, I'm going to put up here the put up here the things that um, that just came to my mind for this um, the. Uh, the first one is custom commands. It's really, really easy to add your own custom commands to DDEV local and third party services is another whole subject like uh, being able to add solar or elastic search or lots of other things to DDEV. There are all kinds of recipes for these. And so we can, we can do that. Um, the uh, advanced configuration using a custom Docker file or web image extra packages is another topic. That's that's uh, you know the web image extra packages technique is pretty easy as long as you know where to find the the packages. Um, casual web hosting is a new feature, well, new in the last revision, um, where you can actually put up uh, websites using DDEV local on a real server, and I have. All the stuff that I now that I host that I've been hosting over the last several years has now ended up on the casual web hosting uh, feature. I just put it on a Linode VM. And then, last but not least, and probably the first thing that we'll start with is using Gitpod to develop um, Gitpod.io with DDEV. So Ofer's going to show that to us. But um, before um, before we do that. I'm interested in what you have to say about what you're interested in and those things or other things. So feel free to unmute, feel free to have your video on. Um, what, uh, what is exciting or what other questions might you have? Any question is fine too, so. Mate. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead, Catherine. I'll go after you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll take things. Okay, thank you. My name is Catherine, and I have DDEV because I went through the Debug Academy Drupal 12 week course for Drupal development. And um, prior to that, I had been, I've, I've done a lot of WordPress, but uh, my PHP was like, uh, you know, I would do whatever I needed to do to get it done, and I wasn't following best practices. So I decided that with Drupal, it was really important for me to make sure I was doing things the correct way because it's um, the stakes are higher and it's more collaborative. So I had DDEV on my machine. I use Ubuntu Linux, and um, everything works great when you just get the uh, Drupal file that they now make available and whenever i went to uh, vs code and i'd read about people doing all this cool stuff with ddev um i think i'm either not looking in the right place for documentation but i just feel like i go down into the weeds and specifically i was trying to get xdebug to work with vs code and ddev and, and i couldn't ever get it to work so i thought uh that's just probably me not being very smart but um, what, what my big picture question is, is how, how can I make sure my DDEV is um, properly 
configured so that when I'm doing Drupal stuff, um, I'm not having people tell me, well, I use Lando. I don't really know about DDEV. So I, I, I think DDEV is, you know, really widely adopted, but I just feel like I'm not looking in the right place. And all the stuff you're talking about sounds so exciting. And my tendency is to jump ahead to advanced things before I have my foundation correct. So I'm feeling that tension. But what would you advise for just basic, basic, like I have something that's not working, where can I look for DDEV? And what most people do is they go to the DDEV channel on Drupal Slack and they ask questions. And there's a lot of great community there that will answer the questions. Um, the, um, the DDEV docs have a complete setup uh, for VS Code and debugging. Uh, DDEV comes with Xdebug already set up. You don't have to do anything with it. Um, if you're using VS Code, you do have to do some things that... Um, it's not DDEV specific, it's xdebug issues, but the docs tell you what to do. Um, I've always been a JetBrains fan. <laughs> so I, uh, but let's add that to the list um, and we can do VS Code with xdebug. xdebug is a great topic. It's not advanced. It's something everybody should be doing, but we can just do that. We can just go through the docs and do that. So let's add that to the list. And of course, I'm happy to help you anytime um, and you can uh, you can ping me um, in the DDEV channel on Drupal Slack, um, and there's lots of other ways to get me, but I'm happy to help you if you're having trouble like that. Thank you, Andy. I will join that Slack channel. Today. Yeah, you betcha. That was yep. the missing link, I think, yep. for me. Okay. Oh, for you, we're going to say something. Yeah, well, just... Definitely recommending again Slack channel of uh, DDEV. It's the best place um, to get help from community. Uh, that would help me figuring out everything about DDEV. Um, for if it's possible, if you can share maybe more of if there is some kind of a roadmap of DDEV functionality, upcoming things. Uh, if there's anything like that, you can share. So let's, uh, let's talk about what's in v1.17. Let's put that on the list. So I'm going to start a little, uh, a little list here in the chat. Um, um, roadmap, uh, DDEV v1.17 features. That's the upcoming version that will be released in the next couple of weeks. Um, assuming that I'm not on jury duty next week and assuming that I don't hit huge bugs when I'm manually testing it all through. Um, and xdebug with um, VS Code and maybe with PHP Storm too. Wow, I can't believe I thought, oh, I haven't turned off the auto, auto spelling on this Mac. I got to turn it off. That's terrible. Okay, so there's there's some um, a few other things that we could we could do today. It sounds like the X debug uh, would be uh, would be a good thing, and of course we can talk about the uh, one at seventeen features and other things on the roadmap and what's and what's booked for one dot eighteen already. There's already like thirty issues on one dot eighteen, so. I don't know if there's going to be a time for that. I'm curious about, I think there's DDEV go through extensible testing uh, methods. And if you would be able to show what's happening, like what kind of testing DDEV go through uh, when you uh, create a new version or PR or things like that. That's a, that's a great question. Um, when you create a new, when, when any commit happens to any PR, um, DDEV uh, runs through a whole test routine on Windows, WSL2, Mac, Mac M1, um, and Linux, and Linux ARM64 as well. Um, and so it runs through thousands of tests on each of those environments. It's really uh, kind of painful to wait for sometimes. Um, and uh, so there's a, there's a huge amount of automated testing but when we get to a formal, uh, full stable release, I write up a whole manual test plan 
so that each feature is reviewed again manually. Um, and that takes, usually that takes at least a week to do. Um, the RC1 for v, uh, V1.17 is already out there. It was released this morning. Um, and I, um, yeah, I think mo I've been in most of those places, so I don't anticipate much trouble, but I always find bugs in that last round every time, you know, and, uh, and, and things that got left out of the docks, stuff like that. Um, so put that on there. Um, Joanne asked, um, if, uh, if we've run into an error with Dita, a drush launch, there isn't a command called DDEV drush launch. So you probably want a DDEV launch. Well, it's on your quick, it is on your quick start. Uh, in that case, it's a bug. It's just a typo, really. It's a typo, yeah. Can you, uh, can you do a PR for it? You can just click edit on the, on the docs and uh, fix that. In the upper right, there's an edit. Uh, there's an edit this uh, page button. Oh my God. Uh, it might have already been fixed. Also, if you're looking at the stable docs as opposed to the latest docs. So, anybody else have things that would be high on your uh, agenda for talking about today on uh, features that are not just straight line look at a website features of DDEV? I'm uh, I'm Chris Wells. I'm from hey, Renton Solutions. I'm working on um, sort of porting all what we've been using, like a virtual machine for the last three or four years, and we're in the process of switching everything over to DDEV. So <laughs> this is very timely for me. And I was looking at sort of things that are missing between DDEV our um, thing and I, I think a lot of this is stuff you're going to cover uh, stuff that i've looked at in terms of maybe custom commands extra containers extra packages so like we use memcache and solar um on some sites we also do the pdf action so we would need tika to be installed somewhere so that solar can extract text from word docs and pdfs and then we make heavy use of terminus so i was kind of wondering why terminus is like the one thing you have to ssh into the container for or or like sort of execute without you know like why isn't there a ddev terminus command um well and if, uh, if you possible, can could i create one yeah yeah you can add uh, custom commands it's just nothing to it so you just look at the examples yeah in the global directory um and you'll see that uh, ddev drush is there and you just copy that and change the name to terminus and there you are so yep. you can add uh, you can add anything um terminus <clears throat> um uh, yeah you you should you should add that if you need it most people of course aren't on pantheon and so uh, right. we're a little stingy on what custom commands or what uh, what extra commands we add to ddev because every time you add a new command it's noise to somebody right and you want to limit the noise yeah. so i mean most people in the world who use ddev have no idea that pantheon exists or why and so that's that's a great case where you can just add your own command because you need it um yeah cool i saw that terminus was in there but just wasn't you know it's yeah, not exposed yeah. as a custom command so yeah. it's cool that that would be easy so i'm interested to learn about custom commands um and then probably some other things. Um, we have some projects that are built with like Ruby and Bundler. So, you know, maybe there's, if we cover some of that extra custom Docker file type so that there are some containers where I might want to add some Ruby in there. And yeah, I'm also interested. There's a lot of stuff. We use a lot of our... Um, sync commands using make files so you know we can do like make make refresh and it gets the latest copy of the production database it you know sets development settings it clears the cache it does you know like a chain of different things and so i was wondering if there was a cool you know if we should switch that to some sort of ddev custom commands or if we should just you know install make in the container and and be able to do a custom command so i'm just curious everything that's out there for that 
I wouldn't be surprised if make is already in there, but um, make is, um, yeah, most people use composer for uh, build type things or, or, or more, mm. more modern techniques. Um, of course, I, I'm from the Go world where make is still a thing. And uh, so I use make all the time. <laughs> but oh, yeah, I never thought I'd, I, I, you know, I used it in the 1990s and I never thought I'd use it again because I thought it got replaced by everything. And then I come along in the Go world and yeah. it's the thing in the Go world. It's like, okay, well, I know this from way back. So fine. But, uh, um, and probably the last big one for me is, um, we have a number, a handful of sites that are kind of big multi sites. And just if there's iterations on multiple databases in database container, and if there's any, uh, any <clears throat> custom stuff for supporting multi site. In DDEV. So there's a, there's a whole DDEV contrib write up on how you do that. Um, so that if you go to um, github.com slash uh, drudge slash ddev dash contrib, you'll see lots and lots of things there, but you just search for multi-site on that page and you will see it. Cool. All right. That sounded pretty easy. I, I uh, ended up following one of those links that was like very perfect and at 404 and I was bummed, but I actually re reached out to the developer and he sent me the archive of, of the article. Um, for DDEV multi-site, and it looked pretty easy. Okay, yeah, the one so, in uh, DDEV Contrib should be fine. I don't think that okay. you'll have any trouble with that. Um, and Joanne, yeah. I am trying to figure out how to give you, uh, how to give you, can we not put images here? I'll give you a link to it to show you how to edit. Um, I see... Uh I couldn't find it before, but then I went to the top of the article and I yeah. see a pencil on the That's top it. right. Yeah. So I can click on it and it takes me directly to the page that I'm going to Why paste did here. Did you change yeah. it? <clears throat> and so here it is. There's what it looks like. How, you let anybody change this page? I mean, it, you're making a pull request. So you, you're going to do it's an open, it's an open source world and the docs are open source. And so by clicking that, you'll be making a pull request, which I'll review. And uh, so that's, and we appreciate people so much um, when they find things that can be approved in the docs. Because of course, I don't read the whole, all the docs every day. And if I did, my eyes would glaze over anyway and I wouldn't along with them. But you see them and it's very much appreciated. This is like, this is like, um... Pull 101, pull 001, like you mean, I have, you know, I've done a pull. So I'm, I'm in, and, and so, yeah. Yep, you just go follow, follow it along and you'll be good. Give a good name to it. Um, so let's go ahead and get, um, let's get this Git pod going. Um, Ofer, I think you should be able to share your screen at, uh, at will and uh, tell us, Tell us what the purpose is and what the meaning is and what the future is and show us how it works. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I've been, uh, since I found DDEV, never looked back, it was uh, great. And uh, for anyone that's coming to it, yeah, I, I actually end up learning Docker through working with DDEV. And this, there've been so many different situation, installation projects that have been using DDEV. So chances are the unique creative thing you're trying to do, someone already did it. And that's why uh, asking things in the Drupal Slack channel of DDEV um, is so beneficial because you, you don't have to figure it out from scratch, um, which is different than what I'm going to talk about now because we did have to figure it out from scratch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, shameless plug. I work at phase two and at uh, March 30th, we are gonna have a Drupal developer ask me anything uh, event. And here's a link if anyone wanna join. And now I'm gonna share my screen where we can dive into the future. Dive so, into the future. Now Zoom messing up my screen. Oh, I see everyone and my screen. Great. You see the Gitpod page? 
great. Yep, we do. So you might have heard of project that kind of trying to do a similar thing, <clears throat> um, GitHub Workspaces, uh, Acquia IDE, which in a nutshell, trying to bring the whole environment of development and work with a browser, which uh, that's why I really think this is the future. And because there's so many benefits that you can have with it, yes, you would need internet, but otherwise you can work with machines that are very lightweight. You can literally work with a tablet and create anything. Um, what's beautiful about Gitpod is that this is an open source project that allows you to do that. On top of that, if you're planning to bring your company to use that, they would allow you to even uh, have their, uh, they have like pricing for things like that, but you could, because it's an open source project, you can have it self-hosted and bring this whole machinery into whatever infrastructure you would like to. Uh, from what I've seen so far, they work with AWS and Google Cloud, uh, probably more are coming. Also, a few months ago, Gitpod became one of the official IDEs of GitLab. So if you would go to your setting in GitLab, you can see you can choose the regular ID of GitLab or you can choose Gitpod. Uh, so finding Gitpod and realizing this is the future, now I had pr a problem because like, how do you develop Drupal? Because there's so many things you need to put together to get Drupal working. Um, so I think I asked Randy at the beginning and was like, what? Nah, it's not gonna work. <laughs> There's so many things to figure out that, uh, yeah. So I actually uh, went in and tried to figure out piece by piece and Randy helped a lot. Uh, and thank you so much throughout the process. Today we have a solid working solution. Now we are at the end of March, Gitbot is fixing one bug we found before that would make it even faster. And what I'm going to show you now is what is possible to do, what we're planning to add in the very near future, and how anyone can benefit from that, uh, including uh, whether it's for your billable project or for Drupal contributions. So any questions so far? Okay, so this is the website of Gitpod. They show you a nice uh, ID. This one is VS Code in a browser. Um, getting it to work is fairly easy. Uh, I'll take you step-by-step step to what does it mean and few things you need to do right now. And in a few days, few of these steps gonna become again easier. Um, let me share with you this project. It's called for now ddev dash gitpod and anyone can you can you can actually do this right now yeah 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 you please can, do it with go, me you can do it with him right right while he's doing this you can do it go to ddev yeah I, I highly you recommend oh, trying it and see see the magic so if you go to the link that I shared in zoom you would get to this repo uh, scroll down a little bit to the readme just below the five minutes video you see the two things that you should do, like I said, right now in about in few days, this is gonna be eliminated. It won't be needed anymore. It's becoming part of the official thing. Um, sign up means you kind of saying, here's my GitHub or GitLab user and that's it. There's no, uh, it's a very simple process. One more thing you wanna do um, is to go, this link would take you to the Gitpod IO settings because for now you need to scroll down that page. I think I can show it to you right here uh, and enable feature preview. So what makes Gitpod, in my opinion, so special, so unique is they encountered, I think a super complex uh, concept, which is we enjoy DDEV because DDEV allowed me to run my, a little machine on my machine and it's in a sandbox, it doesn't affect the host machine, and it's really great. Um, what Gitpod is, is, and Randy, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, there's like a Docker setup, but within that Docker setup, which is a development machine, you can create your own Docker within that. 
one way Gitpad did things before, or still doing it, is allowing people to type a whole Docker file, which is very specific of all the Linux commands to get a system working. The beauty of DDEV is that in a very few commands or a few, uh, not even commands, just uh, simple config files, we can create a very complex setup of uh, anything. Specifically, now we're going to show Drupal, but literally you can do anything. And I believe now uh, DDEV repo itself, which is written in Go language, um, also can be, uh, you can contribute to DDEV by using Gitpod. Without having to set up Go or Docker or anything else, or even touch your local environment, you're running the entire development environment in the cloud. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. So the end result is by having a link that looks like that usually, the syntax is gitpod.io slash pound, and then you attach to that whatever repo public thing you have from GitLab or GitHub, and I believe also, I forgot the third one, another Git um, hosting solution. And that will automatically launch your own uh, setup in the cloud. So once you enable the feature preview, that's what does the Docker in Docker. That's what in a few days you won't need to do anymore. Um, so that will be done. And that uh, works, by the way, on a pull request. It works um, so you can you can uh, do the Gitpod. Um, Gitpod has a handy little button that you can add, but you can go to any pull, re you can just take the URL of a pull request and it'll launch Gitpod with that pull request. Yeah, and I can show you one more thing I do. Um, well, it went into Gitpod itself. Let me open one more window of GitHub. I added their extension. It's a Chrome extension. All it does is it add this nice Gitpod button. So now when I go to any GitHub uh, project, I can click on it and it will open automatically. It will do that, what I showed you before with a gitpod.io slash pound in the repo itself. Um, so that same thing, if I'm on the main repo, that what gitpod gonna load. But if I go to any of the branches or to any PR, what gitpod gonna bring to me is that specific PR. Um, okay. So going through quickly what's happening or what's the, what's the magic behind it. There's two main setting file, Gitpod YAML and Gitpod Docker file. Gitpod YAML is, is the, are the different commands that you wish your uh, machine gonna run. A huge thing that Gitpod added was their caching system. So as you're changing your machine and what is installed on it, that, that part takes time, but at the same time it's being cached. So any changes I'm gonna to make to the computer that doesn't change the configuration of my development machine is already built in. So in the next few days, we're gonna fix a bug that we had from before when you're gonna turn on a machine, it will already have DDEV installed. You wouldn't need to download the images or anything like that. Your project will just have DDEV out of the box in probably less than a minute. But show uh, us the thing, show us the thing, show us the, the thing. thing. Okay, so <laughs> when you click on the Gitpod, you click create, it says starting. I have one ready on the side if anything goes wrong here. <laughs> but it does this one, two, three, four, there's like four steps. This is really cool, by the way. You get to play with this moving logo. Uh, That's your logo. favorite part. Yeah, somehow they're getting rid of it in the next UI, but it's okay. Um, yeah, so this is fairly quickly. Usually it takes about a minute to, to load. Um, and what we'll get is the specific repo I clicked on, which is that uh, Drupal DDEV Gitpod setup. And it will open uh, in the browser. Um, anybody try to do it uh, on your own and enable the feature and see that you get the same result? Okay. It worked for me. Great. Worked so, for me. so what happens, just like the, the DDEV promise itself, each one of us now have our own unique machine 
with the exact same setup. Doesn't matter what you're using. On top of that, Gitpod does allow us to share. I can share my specific machine. So, and I did it uh, many times with Randy that you can get in and put the right commands and see why something doesn't work. So here's my browser with um, VS Code right here. Um, you can change the theme. You can install VS Code extension. What will happen, things to notice in this specific setup. One of the things we're running is called Docker up. That's in order to be able to run the Docker in Docker. The other thing that's happening on the other terminal is Docker is DDEV being running on, is running on the first time. So it's downloading all the latest images that DDEV requires. Um, again, a few days, all this part gonna be already built in. You wouldn't even need to wait for things to download. It will be ready in your box. In the meantime, I can open, this is VS Code, so I can open files, I can edit things. So I can use Gitpod to change the machine that I'm working on and see it happen. Um, one of the things I talked about with caching in your machine is called in Gitpod language pre-builds. And here specifically on this machine, we ask to create a pre-build on everything that change. So, um, any, any change in the branch, a new PR, everything gonna be rebuilt. So we're getting um, a working environment right away. So as you see, DDEV finished running. If you're familiar with what DDEV run on the terminal, usually that's what you will see. And I get to see that a service available in port 8080 available. I'm gonna open browser, which in Gitpod's current syntax is the port name dash, the unique name that they give each workstation. And now you would see a, a Drupal installation uh, screen as you're familiar with it. One of the things I would uh, do right here is I'm gonna draw a Drush command because now I have a full DDEV. I can do anything I can do in DDEV. Uh, just so right you know, here. you don't need that dot anymore. Haven't needed it for a while. It just, hey, there's a DDEV Drush old habits. built in. <laughs> okay. So yeah, one thing I like to also do is put the word time here. So I think it's a fairly fast machine. We have really a Linux uh, machine here. I think it's faster than my Mac right now, uh, which is fun to see. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm using Drupal core uh, to install the Umami demo out of the box. And just like we could see this one, which is the, the regular installation before you do anything. Now you can see that we end up running Drush uh, no setup needed. Basically, everything is ready for us. Someone asks, uh, right, questions about Xdebug. It's one of the basic things all of us need. Uh, the beauty of this system now is Xdebug is built in. It just works. I'm and gonna, I'll try I'm going to ask you. you to demo it. Yeah. And Absolutely. And required to demo it. And that way we'll... First of all, let's just prove it that we really... Uh, yeah, that's what happened when you go to the install page again. But if I'll go to the home page, we have the full umami showing up. And what I'm gonna do next, okay, here's umami. I can run DDEV Drush ULI and getting admin access to do that. Um, I can share with other people this URL. I can open uh, workstations or not. I can also share what's called a snapshot. I don't know if I can see it here. Um, so other people can see the exact status or the snapshot of where my machine, including the database and everything is at right now. So now we want Xdebug because Xdebug is usually difficult to uh, work with. So if I'm going to uh, web index PHP, I think one of the things I should, because I don't know if, in my, if my PHP already have uh, the PHP debugger, um, I think there's an extension. Yeah. Oh, we so, should, uh, we should yeah, see if we can we should, get that in there by default. That will be there as well. Yeah. But just so you can see, I'm now installing a VS Code extension. It's, it's wild. So that's it. That's installed. Now it means that I can uh, go to index again. Index, I'm going to put a debugger uh, breakpoint. 
right, the red dot. Um, I'm gonna go to the debugger and press one second before this ddev x debug on. You want to do that and you want to turn it off when you don't use it so things go fast when you don't need to debug. And once I'm press, pressing play here, now it is listening to what's happening. If I'm going to refresh my Umami web page and go back to my Git pod, look at that. Xdebug worked. It's already uh, looking at where I'm at. Um, yeah, I can like do some amazing things here and whatever you need Xdebug to do for you, it would. You get the call stack, you can find variables, you name it, it's there. So this is awesome. When Xdebug not working, it does work here. I pasted the uh, VS Code Xdebug instruction uh, link in the chat. Um, this isn't harder um, locally. It's exactly the same locally, but the fact is he didn't even have to set up anything. He just went here and in the browser, he's able to do all this and debug. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, another thing that was a worrisome thing that people love to use DDEV, but they love their PHP Storm. Um, so PHP Storm uh, actually came up in good timing for us with a project called Projector. And one of the things we type in the readme that you can try is you type in ddev command and it's called run PHP storm. So if I do that and you can try it on your machine as well. So it's dot ddev slash run PHP storm dot sh. Um, you see that message, I click open browser and look at that. It start green for a second you get a JetBrain user agreement that I would not do anything bad. Okay. Uh, and this is 2020.3. Uh, I think it's the latest. We can click for an iValid for free. You can put your own uh, um, license. And this is the real PHP Storm. So anything you want to do in PHP Storm is absolutely available right here. If I'm going to open my files, um, so that was like huge thing because when people like to develop Drupal with PHP Storm because of all the additional things PHP Storm is adding, um, it's great. So in here, of course, the ultimate uh, test would be also to get make sure that Xdebug is working. So I'm just gonna check again that I have, I believe I have Xdebug working, but you probably want to turn it off on the uh, VS code. Yeah, side. I did. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. often the VS code. So DDEV no X debug is working. I'm going to PHP storm. I'm going to put uh, a breakpoint here. I'm going to turn this on. I also, I'm not sure how this is, if it's valuable or not, but I have this extension that PHP storm usually recommends. So Randy would know better if it's required or not. Um, yeah, That's now I'm going to go to my page. Required. Not required. Okay, thank you. Refreshing the Umami page, and now uh, PHP Storm telling me that it understands there's an incoming connection, accept, and I'm getting the full PHP Storm X debug experience in the browser. Unbelievable. So this is really, really cool. Um, it makes things much easier, uh, setting up things. It doesn't slow down my computer because it's somewhere Google Cloud. Um, so Chris Wells mentions that F10 doesn't seem to work to step over. Um, and the, the function key mapping is one of the funky things about running a Linux application in a browser on a different OS. And I think the, I think what you end up having to do is remapping some of the function keys because F10 has native meaning to your browser. And that's the problem. But I think, uh, I saw, Randy, did you create that issue with projector of telling them that we need certain key bindings? I, uh, I pitched in on it. Uh, yeah. or, uh, because but, yeah. Gitpod itself is taking over certain things that the browser is doing. So I, I'm sure it is possible in a way. When Chris, they were you, Chris, were you on VS Code or, because it would have been F8 on PHP Storm. So you were probably yeah, talking F10 about VS on, Code, on right? VS Code, yeah. Yeah, so... It, it is that 
it there is a there is going to be some difficulty about um, who owns what function keys, and I don't I don't think there's a straight way around that. Um, yeah, so that's the so what's really really nice about it that all of you can actually take it for a, a run and, and see how it works. I really like it. I like how fast it is. What we're trying to do in the open source project of it is to create the easiest setup possible for being able to work with either Drupal or I guess any PHP project uh, compared with an example I saw of, um, of a commerce um, of Magento example that they had like this giant Docker file that you really, really need to dive into understand Docker to make any changes. And here, any change I want to make in the regular DDEV setup, right? We have the config YAML. I can make that change, DDEV restart, and it will take effect. So that's what I really, really like about this, that this is, can support anything with the simplicity of DDEV. Um, also from here, right, I can, uh, sorry, submit. Um, submit patches, do anything I'm, I'm used to. Um, they have two different parts. There's a projector part, sorry, the project part where you can install extension, which is what we're gonna do, probably adding PHP debug as part of the project. But if you have your own extension you love from VS Code, it will know to bring your extensions into it. So uh, usually we have a pile of extension and then um, it makes it very easy. It works with uh, environment variables whenever you need to share secrets or get your um, application to do certain things and get uh, certain access. The long term, which again, after this bug is being fixed in the next few days that I would like to do is creating a composer plugin that any project would run a composer command. There's about four or five files that we need to make this work. And once you add it into your um, into your composer, now this whole setup lives in your project without really affecting your project. The extra files you're going to see in your project are these Gitpod YAML, Gitpod Docker file, and as you can see here, you can take it and do whatever you want with it. Here is where we are installing the PHP Storm projector. Uh, here's where we're installing PHP Storm on the machine. Here's where we're installing the latest DDEV. You could change it and uh, get the DDEV edge if you want. Um, goes here, the in Gitpod YAML is where you have the setup of what happens in a pre-build. So how do you prepare your machine ahead of time? And what happens when you just open uh, your workstation? And in this part, we're modifying or announcing which ports we know we're gonna use. It seems like in April, they're gonna make some changes in ports. I told you the syntax of ports is they write the ports dash, the unique name that they give each workstation. They might be able to change it into what we're more familiar with, which is the URL stay the same, colon, the ports that we want. Um, all ports under 1024 are blocked. So that's why we open it, open the website on 8080 and the different things here. Also built in is what we have here, if you want, is PHP my admin and what do you call the mail service? Uh, mail hog. Mail hog as well. Um, that just run the port and you'll see it happening. They have this little icon to help you see which ports are available and working. If you forget if it's 825, yeah. So this is mail hog right there. And is this PHP my admin? Yeah, so you can decide if to put a VS Code extension to manage your database or use PHP my admin. Um, and you can even change the theme if you like dark or light theme. Anyone has questions or things that you wish this would do? You know, it's almost disorienting watching you do this. Um, 
watching you do this because it's not even clear to us that you're doing it all in a browser. It's like, it, it looks like VS Code to us because <laughs> it is VS Code, but it's like, it doesn't even, uh, we hardly, I mean, if you just, if your eyes aren't seeing the URL bar at the top, you're just like, oh, well, yeah, so what? This is what we always do, isn't it? <laughs> Ofer, I have a question. Um, I've got as far as um, seeing my VS Code in my browser, but when I started to look for DDEV, it says it can't find Docker. So there's something that I missed. And, uh, so let me show you something. Maybe that's where it's at. So as part of the setup, which I also hope to um, make it a little better, there's three different terminals running in parallel. Mm -hmm. uh, DDEV, when you run it first time, for now, the next few days, is taking time because it's downloading all the images. And that's what you see DDEV run. Um, so what the different terminals are, one needs to run Docker up all the time. So we kind of keep that terminal to run in the background. We don't need to touch it, but we have to make sure that it is running. The other one is the one that's running DDEV. Right now, this is also where I ran a PHP Storm. And the third one, and you can open more if you want to do any kind of uh, terminal commands. Do you get a specific error there, Catherine? Oh, I think I just got lost at the beginning. Um, the other thing that I was gonna ask you about is security because it asked me to create an account and sign away all of my life. You know, I was, I was worried when it says it can make changes to my GitLab and GitHub and Bitbucket uh, and get pod.io projects. You know, I, I guess I trust you. So I said, yes. And now I'm in here and, uh, I see this, um, you know, I just think I got lost at the beginning. So I think you can't, you don't have to give all these permissions. Uh, again, they are like, they're, they're based in Europe. I think they care a lot about security and all, uh, and they have all these uh, certification and how they do different things. I believe that if I go to settings here, you can define what kind of, um, is that an integration, access control? I think I give everything, but I think you yeah. can decide. No, I, don't, I only let it read email addresses. That's all I do. Yeah, so you can totally do that. And but it it, work great. that's all yours has, Catherine, is read email addresses. It was only asking for your permission to get your email address from GitHub is all it was asking. And, and actually, the benefit of being able to, you know, uh, integrate with all those platforms is, is certainly uh, helpful. But I could see if I were on vacation, for example, and I didn't have all of my stuff with me, um, you know, I, I could jump on a, a different computer and do something and get the, um, you know, push the changes up to the repository with without too much trouble. So I, I don't mind if, if, it, if it's just, you know, if it's a trust, if it's a trustworthy platform, I am all for saving uh, time and, and so forth. Then the other question is, when I first first went in, and I, I have this um, VS code, I don't see a welcome, you know, I think that I just see the VS code file edit selection view and so forth. So I don't want to hold up the works, but I went to put in the X debug extension and it says PHP debug, debug support for PHP with X debug, Felix uh, Becker, built in. It says built in and you had to add it. You so might, yeah, there's, these are things that are going to change in the next few days. They are working with two different IDEs. One is called Thea, one is called VS Code. I uh. believe. Today, Thea is the default one. In a few days, VS Code gonna be the one. Just so you can see for now, where are you setting that? Because that's a great question. In your settings. It says just open VX, VSX registry, so. Yeah, that's, so Thea is a little bit more uh, complex because it support things, but because of Microsoft, they cannot do certain things. So at the when you go to the bottom of, in Git.io slash settings, uh, this is the feature preview that I want to enable. And here, the default IDE, you choose code, and you're going to get VS Code. OK, let me see if I can figure out where settings are. So git.io slash setting in the URL. 
you can actually or click on your picture and then hit settings oh on my own picture okay um account share workplace about, is it on the account no settings so there's a little menu are I'm you in vs code now or i don't know where i am but let me just let me do um i suggest in the url to type gitpod.io slash settings that will take you to directly to that page okay and receive important emails receive marketing emails that's fine environmental variables get provider integrations and feature. turn on the the feature so preview and enable feature VS code enable feature preview yeah and default ide it is code, code right is but the feature preview wasn't enabled right so yeah. that wouldn't have been working yeah okay. so most so most of the stuff wouldn't work with that on without that on Okay, yes. so now I can go back to my history. And yeah. So as they go, they're adding functionality and sometimes they would make it a preview beta functionality. So not everybody needs to uh, test different things. So this is, yeah. is testing the latest and greatest. In a few days, it's gonna be part of the main uh, branch. Um, yeah, so I think it also supposed to, when you open, uh, I don't know if that's a setting or if, but you would see the README open up right away when you initially uh, open a project. Um, yeah, I've seen that Drupal.org start having um, that module contributors can get a live preview. I wish that when we get to a good working point with this one, will be able to add some kind of a button on Drupal.org for people to just click it and start contributing to core modules and things like oh, that. Won't that be great? Won't that be great? Um, another interesting thing that I thought would be very useful is because we're using DDEV and it's in a repo, at my company, I can run the same setup of DDEV as in Gitpod. So, most people, maybe today, because it's not the future yet, would be more comfortable with their own machine. So the same DDEV setup would work for them. And they would run you know, everything they need to run. But because then uh, the repo is somewhere in the cloud when they need to access that, not in the regular machine, or for some reason they want to test something else, um, Gitpod should work the same way. Um, the part of the machinery of how we make it work and and bend a few things because Gitpod has their own way of doing things is in .ddev for now, we're adding this script file that checking what is the unique workstation URL we got and what are the available ports and according to that setting that up for DDEV. But that would not affect your normal um, DDEV setup. Yeah, it says that um, I have a warning on my DDEV run terminal. It says DRUD DDEV DDEV 1.16.7 is already installed. So that must be from before when I was trying to hit command. It's fine. It Did you, you, you probably want, if you only enable feature preview now, I would suggest to stop that workstation, the workstation that you're on. Okay. and start a new one because I believe they, they're building it differently for you because okay. of the so feature just, preview. So I just hit stop workspace and it goes away or how do yep. I? Yeah, when you do stop workspace, it will tell you it's stopping and you don't need to stay on that window at all. You would just go back to the actual uh, repo over here and you can click again on this link it yes. should ask you and if, it, uh, if it asks you do you want to use the old one you say no i want a new one okay okay yeah so let's go ahead um and finish up with uh with uh questions about uh, you know conceptual questions about gitpod and then we'll move on to one of the other things i think what we'll do for the next one is we'll take a look at custom commands using gitpod so 
What what uh, conceptual questions or future questions do we have for Ofer on this? How many of you followed along? It's cool, huh? Yeah. I sort of put it in the chat too, but I'm curious um, how frequently are those URLs changing workspace? And I'm curious about a multi-site setup. It assumes it makes some heavy assumptions about its default, but if you had a multi-site, I, I think you could just put your, you know, copper ferret dash whatever URL in sites PHP, but there a way to make those maybe more consistent or reliable? That's really, uh, uh, really annoying. Go ahead, Ofer. Yeah. Um... Yeah, the, so the way Gitpod is thinking about things is they're talking about each one of these workspaces as disposable. So purposely, they want you to, as many times as possible, stop one, start a new one, um, because other changes might come and you always want to work on the fresh one and not on um, another one. By the way, another note, if you have a working uh, workspace, it will stay there for 14 days. But if you pin it, it will stay forever. So it doesn't go anywhere. It's a great system to continue working on things. Um, I guess that's Randy's uh, help more of what we do. I, I'm just guessing, but a multi-site support would happen in a similar way of how we're dealing with ports right now, where we're reading the current workspace that was given um, and giving it uh, an additional prefix. Well, we we uh, it's not the port because we're using the router, right? We 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 originally weren't using the router, and now we are again. But we'd have to add additional host names, and I don't know how Gitpod handles us, so we don't know the answer to that. We haven't tried it with multi-site. It's it's not about multi-site. It's about having multiple host names that map to the same project. Other conceptual questions? Yeah, we, um, our use pattern is uh, to use an enterprise Drupal installation that's uh, sort of centrally managed. I uh, work for the University of Minnesota and they, they have sort of a, a core Drupal installation that's, that's managed for us, but then our sites will be, you know, just the site's default subdirectory in its own repo. Can I combine repos this way and, and you know, spin up a, a Drupal installation? Um, using DDEV and Gitpod, um, because that's pretty easy to do on a local host, but in Gitpod? I don't think there's any difference. How would I? I don't I... think there's any difference. You, okay, so, I, yeah, you know, Gitpod is just a hosting service and an sure. editing service, and DDEV is putting the web server up. And if you're doing that locally, there really shouldn't be any difference, especially if you're using a single um, host name to access it. Sure. Okay. So then I guess I would basically spin up the the Drupal installation uh, in Gitpod using this, and then do it like a Git pull or a, you know, a Git checkout of my own repo for the site's default folder, and and continue from there. Are well, you asking? Something. Ofer is going to make a composer um, add-on. You're asking how to bring it that. into your projects. Yeah. Yeah. So today, if you want to test it right away, these are the few files that you need. Mm -hmm. um, and if you take this file and this file, um, it should work. And gitpod yaml. Yeah. So okay. gitpod yaml, gitpod docker file. DDEV config YAML and DDEV Gitpod setup DDEV. These are the four files that you need. It would work the same on any regular, let's call it Drupal project. Um, yeah, the Composer plugin would make all that work much easier because then we will version the different features that might mm -hmm. get added. Um, but, and then you'll be able to bring it to your project and it will only affect the Gitpod set up. Uh -huh. All 
All right, well, I was thinking that the next thing we should do is uh, make a terminus command. Who was it that asked about a terminus command? There we go. So let's just do that in VS Code. So in uh, we'll do that um, using Gitpod. So I've got my bit Gitpod going and I'm gonna share my screen. And here we go. Um, here's my DDEV list. Um, and if I type DDEV, I don't like being stuck in this little tiny terminal. Most of my screen is usually taken up with terminals, but uh, if I do it, um, just type DDEV, it shows me all the commands that are available to me. Um, and what, uh, what I want to do is to add a terminus command. And the normal place to, uh, the place that you would add commands that you want to show up for every project, which I think your terminus example would be is in the dot in the in the the home dot ddev directory um, and uh, in the commands directory and in this case we want something to run in the web container and so here's a few of the things that are already there drush is one of them and i was suggesting that we use that as a pattern um, so now, uh, VS Code here doesn't show my home directory, and uh, I would prefer to open a file here with it. Can I do a file open of a particular file? I bet you I can. There we go. Commands. Oh, tab didn't work. Are you looking for an existing one? I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going here. What I really want to do is go to web um, and I'm going to use Drush. I was looking for how to open it. Um, I was going to open VI in the terminal and I thought that would be evil. So, <laughs> so here we have a, a Drush. And what I want to do is I want to save this as a new file. And I'm going to call it terminus. And so what I want to do, so this is just a bash file. This is a standard uh, thing in the world here. Uh, I'm going to remove the DDEV generated here because it's not, it's, it's your own. And you uh, want to keep control of it. And we're going to say run pantheon.io terminus command in web container. And I'm going to say terminus here. And um, what's what's a good uh, terminus command? DDEV terminus site list. Is that correct? Terminus drush commands are great. Ah, but is site list a valid one? We're we're going to have a hard time using this because we're not authenticated, uh, but. Um, and the project types, we can remove this because, uh, well, it's probably Drupal 7, 8, 9, and Word, Backdrop and WordPress, right? Because that's what they support. They probably don't support Backdrop, do they? Um, and then we're just going to say terminus dollar uh, at to pass the commands on to it. And so all we've done here, I mean, we've just copied and pasted, pasted but we've just um, created a new custom command. So now I'm going to go over here and I don't think you even have to do this anymore, but I'm going to make it executable. I think DDEV now makes it executable for you. Um, and now I'm going to go back to the project workspace. Um, is it DDEV git pod? Okay. And if I type DDEV, um, there is a terminus command and it says run it's what I what I told it to say, and if I say ddev terminus, um, if I just type ddev ddev terminus, it'll give us a list of the terminus commands, and um, I can't do a site list. What can I do without authenticating? Not much. This is what I did. This is good enough. List. Not much is useful beyond that. 
Does that make sense for a, for a custom command? So we did that with a with a custom global command, but um, when you're working with a team or you're working with something that's a little more, a uh, little less generic than terminus, then you would do that in the project commands web directory, uh, which has some other examples there. I got to remove that drush dot example since we have a real one now. So uh, that's very cool. I didn't know it's so easy. Um, can you repeat the, the difference between the two places you could do it and why would you do it in each one? You betcha. So the global one will show up on all your projects. And the one that's in the project will only show up in that project. Oh, so the global one is on .ddiv. It has nothing to do with your project. That's right. That's right. The global one will video. show up everywhere. The, the project one also in most, uh, in most people's setup will be checked in with the project, which is an advantage for a team when you're adding something that is for a team or that's for a specific project. And we just did that in Ofer's, oh, well, in, in my copy of Ofer's Gitpod. We just demonstrated that whole thing with DDEV right there. That's very cool. Yeah, and keep in mind that it's until you actually push it somewhere, I don't have access to it, even that you used my setup. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I do think uh, uh, somebody was asking about security a little while ago. And uh, Ofer and I have uh, gone over this a few times. Let me go ahead and share my screen again. But the security, I think, is very important. And I am not, um, I've not fully come to terms with it yet. Uh, but I leave mine Let's get this out of here. Um, yeah. On my settings, I think that's where it is, right? Where is it? In in your picture, I think access control is where you want to. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, I was right past it. So you see that I don't have it. Um, I haven't authorized anything at all. I don't use GitLub or Bitbucket at this point. Um, and so I've only authorized GitHub to begin with, but I've given it only the ability to know how I'm logging in. Um, if I have to do a Git push, then I will temporarily enable the right public repos, but I don't want that on by default because I'm still learning about the security implications of this. There's other ways also of getting your SSH key in here instead of using their access key. But I think the, the security question is very important. And I think that paying attention to these buttons here is terribly important. So I would uh, start with just that and nothing else. Yeah, where we found the, the issue arise is one of the option is I can open a workspace and then that link that always get a funny name there, um, is shareable. So the other person that I shared with, or if I post it on public Slack, can go <laughs> to that machine. But then if I have write permission, they also can use my Git permit. It's, it, it is as if I'm logged in and doing everything. That's not good. Right. So never share your workspace. But the other feature, <laughs> but the other he's, feature he's you have. On me. He's picking on me because I shared it today. <laughs> but they do have an option to share a snapshot of your workspace. So that is whatever the database said, whatever you did there, that is a shareable link that has nothing to do with you as the user. Each user would have their own permission and only access to whatever they can access. Okay, so uh, one of the other things, let's, uh, if, if anybody has a last minute question about uh, custom commands or, um, or uh, about- Is there an easier way to share, not easier, easy way to share commands 
like is it in DDEV contrib that I can just download it? So there's a whole bunch of them in DDEV contrib, but um, uh, of course for your team, the best place is in your project and you just check it in, right? So that for your team, that's the answer. But yes, uh, there's a whole section of them in DDEV contrib. Could, could I ask a question about versions of DDEV? Um, um, can, I... can I ask you a favor? I should have asked you this a long time ago. Could you turn up your input volume, your microphone volume? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is good. I don't have very good uh, audio. I'll just talk louder. Okay, um, I can hear you. I can hear you. The question is, I have DDEV uh, 1.16 something on Git, uh, Gitpod. And on my local machine, I have 1.14. And I have not worked with DDEV to where I ever had to upgrade it. So I don't know whether there's an implication with having a project say that I'm working on gitpod.io and then I bring it down locally and worked on it locally. Would I run it? Would I run into version issues or should I have to always make sure my gitpod.io is synced version wise on DDEV with my Gitpod. Phone. Gitpod's going to use the current version. And um, those of us that do support and maintain things would really very much appreciate it if you would upgrade yours as well. Um, you're not going to have any trouble uh, going from 1.14 to 1.16. And so the, the real answer is to, the real answer is uh, please use the current stable version so that you don't end up with support problems that have already been answered by um, the new stable version. Right, I did have issues like that working in project with other people. Uh, something that worked for me did not work for them. They had an older DDEV with a bug that was already fixed in the current version. So um, yeah, upgrading to the current version is gonna be beneficial. Is it just DDEV uh, update and it won't break anything if I, up what, I mean- I What know, operating system are you on? I'm on Ubuntu. On this one, I'm on 18. LPS. Okay, so if you're using uh, Brew, if you're using Homebrew, then I'm you'll not, do, yeah, okay. I, I noticed but in that, that case, YAML has Brew commands and I'm not- a Okay, so just go to, uh, here, let me just show you here. I'm just gonna go to ddev.readthedocs.io, which is the, is the page here okay. and on that page it says how to install and uh, it says here's the homebrew technique which you didn't use um, and so you go down and it says the installation or upgrade script which you apparently did use yes. and here's the command for you when i used linux i think i really enjoyed using brew i don't know if it's possible for you to switch it um, I, did, I don't know. I don't think they had Linux brew back when I started using Linux, so I haven't. I, I guess I'm just a creature of habit. But it's um, it's your choice. You can just yeah. you can just use the upgrade script like this, and you'll be fine. And that and that will not overwrite anything that will break. Uh, no, the the reality is, um, you know, I can't. I don't know everything about your world, but the reality is, DDEV is a single binary. And that single binary is where all the stuff is going on. It doesn't have like DLLs or anything like that or shared libraries that it's installing or anything like that. It's a single binary. Um, when you do that, you will end up, um, you will end up when you do a DDEV start, you'll end up pulling all the latest container, the latest images. And so you'll want to do that. But that, I mean, it's not, it's, you will do that. That's what will happen. But um, I would say that at least 95% of the time, you will not even know the difference. And you're just better to stick with the, stick with the current stable version. I will do that. Thank All right. You. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at what's in the upcoming version. And we can talk about, uh, we can talk about uh, what might be there. And that's kind of a part of talking about the, um, kind of a part of talking about the um, the roadmap because that's the coming very soon roadmap. Um, okay, you go there, you go there and I 
I will just get out the uh, the the release notes um, that I'm working on, so we can see uh, what's going on. Um, one of the very first thing I notice is that we don't have to say to do a DDEV power off anymore because DDEV will offer to do that for you. Um, so the one of the really wonderful things that's going to be in 1.17, and this is available now, of course, in the release candidate, but Composer is now version two by default, uh, but you can still use version one. It tells you how here. Um, we have now a provider integration system that is user configurable. So you can change it or add other providers. We're talking about hosting providers here. Um, so if you are using Acquia, you can pull from Acquia with the DDEV pull Acquia. But if you're using um, some other um, thing, um, who's another hosting provider that we don't have, have supported here, um, you can just, if you have a, a homegrown one, um, you can just implement it yourself very quickly and easily. Um, I can, uh, I guess I won't dive deep into that. I'll be doing a screencast on that within the next bit uh, to show you how. But there's links here to how all of these work. Um, and uh, you, can, you can create your own, add your own. There's an rsync example. There's a local file example. Like if you, if you use Dropbox and you have a, a normal database that you're always installing from Dropbox, well, that's just a local file pull. It's nothing to it. Um, we've added support for pushing to hosting provider, although I'm still trying to talk people out of using it unless they know why they're using it. Um, we have official support with the Apple M1. Uh, the, the Apple Silicon, um, a whole bunch of really cool improvements to DDEV Snapshot. Um, you, uh, you can now select, um, you can just do a DDEV Snapshot restore and select from the snapshot you want. You can restore the latest. Um, Is the, everyone familiar with Snapshot? Because oh, it's great a really point. good feature. Yeah. 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 So if I go back to my... Um, if I go back over here to my Git pod and go to the right Git pod, when I don't know where my right Git pod is. Oh, here, um, this is how you can go back to something where you were before. So here's the one that I was on and it uh, it's apparently timed out on me. So I can just say start and it'll open that up and bring it back up again. Um, so I'll just show you what Snapshot is. Oh, but I'll have to upgrade uh, DDEV to, to uh, I won't, I won't uh, fool around uh, getting the latest DDEV here, um, but I will show you Snapshot because that feature has been in there for a year or two and it really is nice. Uh, but basically Snapshot takes a snapshot, a very fast snapshot of your running database and you give it a name and then you can restore it when you need to. So it's great for backups, but it's great, great, great for when you're incrementally working on a problem. So for example, if you're working on a migration, a migration usually is a many step process where you're, um, you, you get a piece working, uh, but then you have to work on the next piece. So what you do is you save the one piece um, and you um, you save it when you get to the one place and then you start working on the next one. And every time you need to get back to it, you just go back to this DDEV snapshot restore. Um, so let's see what we've got going here. Um, it's not started up yet. Um, you might still have it downloading in the other terminals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Which there is what's gonna get right fixed there. in the next few days. Yeah, <laughs> yep. So that'll be ready in just a second, but uh, a, a snapshot saves a very, very fast um, database so that you can come back to it and you can always start over at the same place, even if you've fiddled with stuff. It's also great if you're insecure about what you're working on. So if you're, you know, if you're insecure about whether you're, you're doing a site edit and you might just screw everything up, you can just do a snapshot uh, before it 
and you can keep going back to that. Or if you're studying a bug, that's another great and another great thing. When you're studying a bug and trying to find a recreation scenario uh, for it, you can always, you know, if you find one, you can you can snapshot it, and then you've got it, and you can keep going back to it and working with it with it in X debug and that kind of thing. Now, you would never put a snapshot in your Git repo as version uh, control to, re you know, as an archive. It would just well, if you did that and you had a public repo, then you'd be exposing everything about your um, what you were working with. Okay. So I wouldn't do that. Um, uh, no, I wouldn't do that. Um, I would, okay. if you had, you, the snapshots are just a directory, um, but, um, you could put them in a different kind of storage, but I wouldn't check them into Git. It's like sharing your Git pod um, uh, URL. <laughs> a little bit. It's a little. It's, it might be a little worse because if you had a copy of your production database, then everybody's uh, hashed pat passwords are in there. Um, okay. So I think it might not be the thing you'd want to do. Yeah, but but it's safe to have it on Git pod because. Nobody on Gitpod can see it unless we were to. Yeah, share. nobody can see it. And I'm going to delete this instance in a few minutes anyway. Okay. So this is how you do it. You do a DDEF snapshot dash dash name equals um, midcamp. And it just makes a snapshot right there. Um, and then with this version, so it tells you where it made it and that kind of thing. Um, with this version of DDEV, we don't have the fancy, the new fancy features where I can choose which one I want um, here, but I can make another one called MidCamp2. Um, in this version of DDEV, um, I would do a DDEV restore snapshot. Hey, we got to get the auto, uh, the, the auto, um, auto complete in there. So we do a DDEV restore snapshot dash H. Did I not type it right? I did. I think the autocomplete is on. Um, I, I think DDEV's autocomplete isn't installed. Mm. And it has to be, um, uh, anyway, let's, we have to figure that out. Um, so we'll do a DDEV snapshot restore dash dash name equals mid camp. And it'll get the first one that I did. Oh, well, sorry, I'm using the wrong, the backwards. It's already lost out of my fingers. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh, copied from the oh, terminal. Uh, this is the problem right here, right? So there we go. Um, so that's just the, the quick way to get back to where you were and you can get back to any number of things. The key to snapshot though is um, use a good name for your snapshot. The default is a date time sequence. And so you, you want to use a use a good one for that. I used it in project where with a huge database that took half an hour to do an import, but snapshot took I don't know thirty seconds or something. Yeah. So yeah. way faster than getting uh, the MySQL import database. Yeah, because it's actually saving it in the native format. Um, it's it's saving it in the actual native format. Okay, let's run through the the. Um, so there's a whole bunch of improvements to DDEV snapshot here. Uh, Blackfire.io is now in there and we could actually demo, demo that, but that would be another demo. Uh, Blackfire.io is a profiling technique. It's a commercial service, but they have a good free, uh, it's actually quite a generous free setup. Um, so now there's a DDEV Blackfire on and you can just immediately do Blackfire, which is really uh, very nice. Um, if you are used to creating a lot of projects and you don't want to answer the questions that come with DDEV config, there's now a DDEV config dash dash auto that just takes you quickly through the process. It's just a one step thing. Um, this is a big one. Um, you can now uh, create environment variables in your config.yaml or your global config.yaml. So you can create them globally or you can create them in your project. And it makes a huge difference. Um, if you want to share secrets, you can put secrets in your global config. Um, you used to have to do this in docker compose.star.yaml, and you don't have to do that now. 
And uh, uh, we now have a database browser if you're on Windows. So DDF Heidi SQL. Um, the defaults have changed for PHP version. So PHP 7.4 is now the default for new projects. And the MariaDB default for new projects is now 10.3, um, which makes it easier with Drupal 9. You don't have to think about that with Drupal 9. And then the, the new docs theme is, is very cool looking um, and has better features as well. Um, I don't think that any of the smaller changes uh, are very interesting to this crowd. So I'll just skip those. Um, things that might change for you that might impact you. Um, if you haven't been installing Drush in your Drupal 8 or 9 projects, you need to install it because it's not going to be there in user local bin drush on those on those versions. Um, Composer 2 is now the default Composer version. That's working with most things now. Drupal 8.9, Drupal 9 plus, all of them work fine with Composer 2. But if you need to switch, it tells here how to switch to Composer version 1. Um, and of course, the provider interface is completely different. So people that were using it before um, it will take a little bit of, um, it, it's, it's pretty easy to get used to because it's a lot simpler. Um, you don't have to do the auth or the config steps anymore. Um, so I think that's, uh, I think that's most of the, most of the 170 things, the 180 things. Um, one, 118.0. Um, I haven't started thinking a lot about it, but most of these are not big new features. Um, so although um, code push and pull will probably come along for provider integrations um, so that you can do a DDEV push Pantheon and it'll do the Git push for you as well. So that's a, that's a big new one. Um, and I think most of the rest of these are bugs and uh, iterative improvements. The DDEV roadmap, which I don't maintain um, as well as I would like to. Um, uh, Google has the wrong, Google has the wrong thing here. Um, The, um, I think the biggest thing that we'd like to get in that is probably beyond my ability to maintain right now is um, having a GUI um, instead of just a text one that would make it so accessible to people. But I think it probably expands beyond my ability to maintain it. And since I'm the maintainer, we have to keep things to where they're maintainable. That's gonna um, be like an electron? app or something yeah yeah and we actually had an electron app in the past but um there's there's actually native go uh gui stuff uh, that it could be implemented in um but um yeah I, what i'd like to do is an, have it in a native go so that it'd be all maintained as one thing when we had it before as an electron app just that just ran the data um, command line um, it was a huge thing to maintain and it didn't have tests and it may still work. It's out there slash drud slash DW UI, but it just couldn't be, it couldn't be supported, you know, cause it, uh, it didn't have tests. Um, and because it was electron, um, you know, it's a whole different world, completely different world. So it needed somebody else to be paying attention to it. And Drud didn't have the resources to, to keep anybody's eyes on that, which only makes sense. We'd like to expand the, um, the CMS support um, and improve the CMS support. We're getting quite a, lot of, um, quite a lot of traction in our Magento support and our Laravel support. And um, um, what else? We have um, several other things. But uh, Sulu, Joomla, Craft CMS, it would be great to have explicit support for those. Um, so 
Anyway, okay. Any questions about roadmap or upcoming features in the next uh, couple of weeks in the one about 18? Do you think you might like, I really liked how Gitpod did the milestone in their issues. Yeah, yeah. Do you think you might so, uh, do something like that? So then it's well, we have, more feasible. I mean, we, we have it in milestones. Um, so here's the 117 milestone. We're almost done. Um, here's the 41 closed You're issues. Not sharing your screen. Oh, I guess I ought to share my screen, huh? I just now turned it off. So uh, here's the here's the 117 milestone here. Um, this is the one remaining open issue. Here's the 41 that had closed in this. Um, the um, we can uh, we can look at milestones here, and here's the 118 milestone. So um, I don't usually maintain these more than one milestone ahead, uh, but does that answer your statement? Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I I did not notice we have milestones. It's great. Yeah, yeah. it's a pretty simple technique for tossing things in and prioritizing them. So, any other questions about uh, the path forward? Anybody? Do you want to take a you want to take a five minute break and come back and we'll look at some other things? Why don't we do that? We'll come back. It uh, is five minutes enough. And we come back at one at uh, it's uh, 2.40, right? Come back at 2.40 Central Time. Is that all right? We'll be back at 2.40 Central Time. All right. OK, are we back? Anybody back? Tell me, is anybody back? Ah, at least Ben's back. Ben and I can Ben and Brooke and I can start without everybody else. That's good. Okay. Looks like we lost a couple of people, which is not surprising. We've been going at it pretty hard, uh, but we can have a good time. Um, either of you have a favorite uh, favorite question or topic that you want to deal with this afternoon? personally curious about um, you know extending uh, the, with docker files and such extending some of the things that we might be able to do with this um, I'm kind of a newbie to docker I'm kind of a newbie to ddev in general but our team is is quickly adopting it a lot faster and one of the things first things that I had to do was um, enable like a custom connection to an Oracle database for example for some info and so I needed to uh, draw up a, a custom docker file to to get the appropriate extensions php extensions and such and i'm just wondering if there might have been uh easier ways to do it than what i did so so yeah that's, so that's a great question so let's go let's go that direction um we'll look at how to add uh an extension or a, a debian package into ddev um, and we'll look at where most people get their copy and paste solutions from um, so we'll do, we'll do both of those things. So I think the first question is, um, how do we add a, just add a, um, add a package. So we'll do that. I think your, your Oracle question is a little, uh, more advanced because I, I think they require you to have a separate repo. And so since you have to have a separate repo, you are stuck with using a Docker file. Uh, but it sounds like if you've already been there, you've been in the really advanced land. Um, but let me make, let me say first, I'm going to share my screen here. And let me say first um, that most people go to DDEV Contrib first. Um, they go to DDEV Contrib first to see what's there. Um, and so um, I wonder if this has Oracle in it. it. Doesn't have Oracle. I hope you'll paste. I hope you'll provide your Oracle recipe. Um, there are examples here with Docker Compose .yaml snippets. There are custom command examples. Um, there are 
uh, additional services for many different things. Um, and then there's uh, Docker file examples, um, like for the Stripe CLI or Laravel Q worker. And then there's some full, um, full tutorials. Um, so for example, um, setting up Drupal 8 multi-site, that kind of thing. Uh, some typo three examples, headless Chrome, uh, things like that, that either will solve your problem or get you started on it. And there are also a pile of things in Stack Overflow where they're tagged um, ddev, dot, uh, tag ddev. Um, and uh, this is a great support place because it can be maintained easily. Um, and so it's a great place to ask questions, especially if you're not in a super hurry. Um, I mean, they usually get answered really fast anyway, but they live on here and you can edit your question and edit your answer and people can comment on it. And it's just a, it's just a great place. Um, one more place to look is in awesome DDEV, um, which is a list of, um, it's a list of people's blogs and that kind of thing. And, um, I always want to hear too, when you um, when you have something that should be added to this. If you write a blog or something like that, we want to have a we want to have a link to it in here. But there's lots of stuff here, including all of my articles about DDEV, which is quite a lot. And sometimes they come at these problems from a different angle than the docs can. So, um, for example, this uh, casual web hosting, which we we won't get to today. Um, this is a screencast that um, helps you to understand it from a more from a from a bigger picture point of view. Um, so there's there's a lot of a lot of options there, but let's just go and find out how we would add a package to begin with, and maybe we'll just do this with our. Um, are we still alive here? Still alive. Let's do that with this. Um, I like the new docs, so I'm going to switch to them. Um, and we will search to Debian customizing Docker images. So I think you've already been here and you've already, um, you've already started to understand this, but the easiest thing is when you just need a package, an extra package, like one of those is you just go and add web image, web image extra packages uh, to your uh, config.yaml. Um, so the, um, the default packages, there's many of them already in there. Um, so this, these are already in the base distribution that we use. So you don't really have to do anything. Um, but then you can go searching for other types of packages that you might need uh, by going to packages.debian.org slash stable. And then we can do what, uh, if that is not adequate, which it sometimes isn't, like if you need to uh, install a different node version, here's a, here's a recipe for you. Um, and so these are the, if, if you know what package you need, then it's really easy to just do the web image extra packages. That's, that's, that's nothing to it. But when you have to do something fancier, um, then you're gonna have to end up writing a Docker file and there's Docker file examples in your project. So we'll take a look at that. Um, but I'm actually just going to take, I don't really wanna take that one. Um, let's take a look here at, um, let's just search for Docker file and DDEV. Um, So here's a, a classic thing of where you just want to run a yarn command uh, before your project even runs or anything. It's not as good as what I want. Okay. Here's NVM. So a lot of people need NVM so they can switch node versions in the project. And so you can take 
Uh, the, the top part is boilerplate. Um, and then you can uh, do whatever. This is the documented process for installing NVM here. And uh, so that's, that's a technique for you to do it. Um, so if you wanted to install Oracle, I think, I imagine you needed the PHP, the Oracle PHP extension, right? Um, so this one uses the Peckle repository. Um, and so now what we've done is we've, we've done a web search to find out how I get the Oracle PHP extension. And then we find out that we want it to come from Peckle or from Pear. And so um, I think that the docs actually tell how to do that, uh, but they might not. No, they don't. Um, so, but the um, the Stack Overflow does. So you find here, how can I install a, install a Peckle extension like mcrypt? Um, and so this is exactly the same, exactly the same issue here. And we're just going to do a uh, peckle install. So here we did a peckle. Um, um, here we did a peckle install mcrypt. And in the case over here, it'd be a peckle install OCI8. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what we would do. And let me show you where you would do that. Um, so I'm just going to take um, this and copy it. Um, And I'm going to go over to our happy world over here. And if we go into the .ddev folder and into the web build folder, there should be a docker dockerfile.example there. And there isn't. Um, I wonder if that's, I'm just, the reason I'm pausing is I'm wondering if it's a bug where the example is not being written. Um, so let's go ahead and use um, the proper editor here. So we'll go into web build and I want a new file called Docker file. And I want to paste into it uh, this stuff. And I'm going to use the 7.4. And I want the 1.16.7 base. Oh, no, we don't have to do this at all. That was an older version. Um, you probably sure. want to remove the first line. Yeah, thank you very much. It's not going to work, is it? So. Um, and we don't need this line here. I don't, oh yeah, we do need it, but we don't need the libmcrypt dev here. So these are just the requirements for doing peckle and we want OCI eight, right? Um, and we want 7.4 um, and it's probably OCI 8. Um, this should have been dollar PHP version in the first place. And this should be OCI 8. And who knows, this could work. It may blow to smithereens. Um, but you see now we have a Docker file there. We do a ddev start. Um, normally I would do these commands one at a time in the web container. Mm -hmm. I would ddev SSH in there and I would do these commands one at a time until I had them working right. Mm -hmm. That um, was gonna be my follow-up. I didn't know if there were some hints that yeah. you had at doing that other than like stop the container, comment out what broke, try it again. <laughs> so, 
so I am going to do it. I'm going to do it the way I would normally do it um, because um, that's the way to do it anyway. So it wants, um, I'm going to set Make sure that I've got the right um, thing here. No, I don't. Oh, we're back a version. Uh, so this this was going to have a little trouble anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so so I'm going to do a sudo app get upgrade, and then see if I can get through this uh, process here. Um, and that will it, it didn't come didn't. Didn't blow up yet. Okay, we need uh, libssl dev. And so, um, so I don't know um, what I have to do to solve this, and I probably shouldn't try to solve it in front of you here. I missed the beginning of it, what we're trying to do. Yeah. So what's that? I missed the beginning of it and I didn't. So know. what we're what we're doing, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, you came in. Um uh, what we're doing is we're doing a peckle, um, a custom Docker file that does a peckle install of something that isn't in the normal repository. So in this case it's Oracle. So we're trying to install uh, we made this Docker file here um in dot ddev web build Docker file. And uh what um, what we're trying to do is install this Peckle extension since it's not in the in the default stuff. Hmm. So now what I'm going to do now that we've installed hopefully most of the prior um, the things the prerequisites, I'm going to do a sudo Peckle. We're inside the web container here. Yeah. Peckle install OCI eight. Oh, that's OCI eight. Aha. So we don't want OCI eight. We want um, this is um, I just landed here on the web. So obviously I'm doing this it line right underneath for PHP is, seven. Oh, there we go. Thank it was you. Right underneath it. Thank you. Keep going, keep going, no, keep no, going. Right, right where you were, but the literally the next line under it. For PHP 7, use peckle install OCI 8 220. <laughs> or PHP 7. Uh, you just tell me what to do. I can't see Scroll it here. Go a little bit up. up. Like one inch. There oh, there it. it is. It was there. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. Uh, okay. Well, how about that? We'll just do that then. Um, so I got to go back to my place here. So I want to do that. Oh, and I don't remember how to install PHP eyes. So you have to get PHP eyes in there. Mm -hmm. um, it uh, this this isn't that hard a process, but I don't want to. Uh, you know, go into the wild, the wild woods with everybody looking on and wondering what we're doing. But the the bottom line is um, that to solve a problem that's complex and requires a custom Docker file, the first step is find out how do I do what I need to do in regular Debian. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step, and so that's why we that's we that's why we searched for. Um, for Oracle with PHP. And we found our way here. Um, and so we found out how to do the Peckle install on it. So that's the first step. And then the, the next step is to experiment with it inside the web container um, using some of the resources like this one, which is about how to install a Peckle extension um, and to adapt what we have and then once we understand what we would be doing, we have to get PHP eyes in there, obviously. So if we were, 
if we were wanting to spend a lot of time on this, we'd just go search and figure out what I'm missing about having PHP eyes in my container. And then we'd manually do the Peckle install and then whatever other cleanup needed to be done. And then uh, we would then uh, put that into our Docker file. And basically, once we found the correct um, formula, then we just put it into these run statements and check it in and there we are. And we do a DDF start and it does the build. Yep. And yes, it does take, that, that, as, as you already found out, yes. um, it uh, takes a little bit of work to find your way through it sometimes. But the bottom line is find out what you need to do in Debian, mm -hmm. do it by hand, yeah. and then put it in a Docker file. Sure. Yeah, so. those resources too are, are very helpful. I, I'm not sure that I found everything that you were pointing at now back when I was trying to do all this. So I was I was making my own way through it. But that, that's you very bet. helpful. Yeah. That's very impressive that you did that. That's uh, that's definitely advanced. Um, that one of the things is whenever you start getting into the Docker Compose at start at YAML, or when you start getting into the Docker file, all of a sudden your need for knowledge has gone from, oh, I need to know how to do DDF start and DDF launch to, oh, I need to understand Docker and Docker Compose and what the integration is like and Debian and all those things. So you, you just start multiplying and, it, and that's pretty, that, that can be a little, um, it can be a little work as you know, as you found out. But the fact that the, you can do it is really good. What are some of the more common uh, web packages that are easier to install that people might need to, to think about? Um, some of the some of the easiest the easiest ones uh, are just when you can just add a Debian package. So, um, like in the example in the docs. Um, um, so, if we just needed a PHP extension that was already supported, mm -hmm. that's all there is to it. Um, so that's that's an easy one. Um, the uh, doing a yarn install in advance is another one. Um, there, there's um, for ones that need uh, so somebody wanted uh, global um, PHPCS the um, the code sniffer um, I don't know why they wanted it but um, uh, they you know here's the example of how to do it do composer with it um, do it with a composer global install for whatever reason that they wanted it, instead of it built into their project. Um, so there's, um, you, you know, you can get really obscure. Um, hopefully most people won't have to go there. Um, so for example, you can, you can override um, DDEV's phpfpm.conf and stuff like that. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of things you can do here. Oh well, my goodness. There's a lot of things you can do. Let's see if I can get myself back to where I'm supposed to be. Oh, you weren't even seeing my screen as I went through all that stuff. I apologize. Uh, somebody, you got to tell me when I'm doing that. Sorry about that. So what I was doing was I was looking through all, I searched for, for DDEV and Docker file in uh, Stack Overflow. Um, and I was looking at all that. I'm not even sure when I turned off my screen. I really apologize. I hope, hope I wasn't rambling on too long without any context. Are we exhausted yet? Or do we want to do something else? Excited. <laughs> so much cool stuff. I there definitely is a, want to see uh, extra services. Okay. Well, let's take a look at extra services then. Um, so we will just do that. Um, I'll share my screen. And we will go to um, we will go to the extra services. I'm going to go to the latest docs because I like the look so much more. 
So here's the additional services section of the uh, of the docs here. Um, and the classic example is Apache Solar. Um, a lot of people need that with uh, Drupal. Uh, but it's also one of the most complex that there is because uh, solar itself is complex. The Docker solar container is complex and the Drupal integration is complex. Um, and so there's a number of steps to install it and you can screw it up a number of places along the way. Um, so, and, and then worse than that, the solar, the people that maintain the solar container, they seem to change the model of how they maintain it periodically. So the, the current um, documented technique is for solar eight, but um, Acquia and Pantheon like solar three, four, and seven, and they don't work exactly the same. So there's a recipe for them in DDEV contrib. But let's do one that's easier, um, and it'll be a good example for us. Let's just do memcached D. So what we'll do, um, it, are, are you all familiar with memcached D? Are people still using that? in the Drupal world. Um, it used to be standard on every non-trivial Drupal um, site. Um, I can't, because, I, because I'm sharing my screen, I can't see you if you uh, nod your head or anything. Yeah, I have um, a few projects still using it. Yeah, yeah, is it, are people starting to use Redis or what are they doing? Yeah, Pantheon supports Redis. Like, uh -huh. uh, as an add-on, so a lot more people, I think, are using Redis. And I think so, just oh, Drupal I'm 8 caching is Redis. faster, so <laughs> they're like, there's less of a need for it. But So let's do let's do Redis. We'll go to DDEV Contrib. Um, uh, there's a whole bunch of services here in DDEV Contrib. These are community maintained. I try to try them out before I commit them, but they, um, you know, they don't have tests with them. And so they can get out of date. And when you find a problem, it's your job to solve it. So, <laughs> um, you know, this is a community maintained thing, but here's Redis and Redis Commander. So I'm gonna open um, the Redis one and the Redis Commander because they're both very nice and very cool and they're easy to use. Um, so um, the, the first thing that they did was they added a uh, commands Redis directory um, to the commands folder of the project DDEV folder. Of course, this was written before there was a global commands um, section. Um, and then they say, change it if you need to, which we don't need to, um, and then update the config um, as you need. So I will just do uh, what it says here. Um, so I'm gonna take the Redis uh, CLI command I'm going to get the raw version of that. And I'm going to go back over to my still running thing here. Um, and here I am in DDEV Gitpod. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to go into the, I'm going to put it in the project commands for now because I'm there. And so I'm just going to get that Redis CLI uh, custom command. And let's just take a look. Um, we'll just take a look here and see what's in it. This is just like what we've been working with. There's nothing to it. It's just um, it's just showing what um, what the command is to run the Redis CLI. So now we have a Redis CLI and we will go uh, back over to DDEV Contrib, if we can find it and we don't get lost in all of our tabs. Um, here, we'll do the next step um, of what they suggest on Redis. We copied the Redis, um, the Red, we just made a custom command, which we didn't, we didn't specifically have to have and now we're gonna get the, um, the Docker Compose and the Redis config. So we need this 
we need this Redis config and we're going to put it in .ddev redis.conf. So I'm going to get the raw for that. And I'm going to go back over to my Git pod. And I'm going to make a Redis directory here. And I'm going to get that config. And I don't know really anything about Redis. Um, so there it is. And it's, it's the standard Redis config. And so now I'm going to go back to my instructions. And it's going to tell me that I need this docker compose.redis.yaml. So I'm going to get the docker compose.redis.yaml, get the raw. And you'll see all it's doing is getting us a container, giving it a name, giving it labels so that DDEV knows that it belongs to it. Um, and it's got volumes for um, the configuration. Um, and um, this is saying that the web container depends on uh, Redis, which I don't know that that is needed there. So we will go ahead and go back to here and we will get that, we will get that uh, YAML file. And now uh, if I did have start, I should have Redis, uh, but why don't we get the Redis commander while we're here because there's nothing to it. Um, here's the Redis commander. I don't think you have to do anything other than what it says here. I don't think you have to do anything other than this. Except remember where it is when it runs. Um, so we'll do a DDF start. I'm going to do a DDF restart because I want everything shut down before it comes up. And, uh, oh, <laughs> I need to delete that custom Docker file. The custom Docker file that was broken was still in there. So now it's, um, it's opened the, um, the Redis connection um, and I can open the browser. I'm betting that this is the, no, let's see here. Let's try this one. Oh, we haven't. So this may be a complexity of working with this on here, um, but it doesn't actually make any difference whether I can get to the Redis commander with, you know, we may not have um, adequate configuration, but I can do a DDEV SSH. Now I'm in the web container and I can ping the Redis, um, ping the Redis uh, container and I can connect to the Redis container um, on the internal port. Um, so um, the, the port for that, is it 6379? 6379, it looks like it is. So, I should be able to, um, and so I'm in the web container. So I'm looking at the world like your PHP code does. And I've got a connection to it. Um, I think it's HTTP, um, but um, it may not be HTTP. Um, but the, my PHP code can now connect to the Redis, um, the Redis additional service. Um, so, uh, basically what we did was we added, um, here we go. 
we added two Docker Compose uh, services uh, to this, um, the redis.yaml and the redis commander.yaml, which didn't really work out, but the redis one worked out just fine. And your, your PHP would be able to do that right now. So um, that is essentially it. And if you look at, if you look at the Redis one as an example, um, let's, not, let's look at the Redis one here. I don't know what that is about. If you look at the Redis one as an example, this is similar to the memcached one. It's really not that much trouble. Um, you, you set that the, some of this is boilerplate from the docs, like the container name is boilerplate. The image is the one that you decided to work with coming from Docker hub. The ports, um, is, uh, what ports are exposed. The labels are there to tell DDEV how to find, um, how to find that, uh, tell DDEV that this container belongs to it. Um, and then these volumes allow the uh, allow the data to be cached. And then uh, you know here's the command, and we had the important stuff inside the Redis.con. And then this is telling a couple of details that get merged into the web containers configuration, so that it knows you know it has a specific link to Redis in there. So. Questions about that? I know it's a it's a little intimidating because it requires some understanding of Docker Compose, uh, but the the find other people's stuff in uh, DDEV Contrib is a pretty time honored technique. <laughs> Someone was asking, uh, was saying a Twitter. Uh, do developers know that Stack Overflow actually have a homepage? What's that? Someone was saying on Twitter and asking if developers know that Stack Overflow actually have a homepage. Because we always end up uh, right seeing an issue and reading everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 do, I, I, uh, I, I don't read everything in Stack Overflow. I know it's very addictive. But I, I just, I pay attention to DDEV and that's all I paid. But actually I serve, you know, I Google, I consider it one of the finest information sources on the web, mostly because of the voting up kind of thing so that you end up finding out what the actual answer was. And I don't know why, I don't know why Drupal.org even has a forum anymore. I can't even believe after all these years that they do because, because Stack Overflow does it so much better. that the best part is being able to figure out what the real answer was. And that's due to contributors like all of us. So make sure that when you do something on Stack Overflow, you share your answer and you vote up the ones that are real and comment if it's not working and stuff like that. Any last things that we should do before we go? You've, you've been terribly patient and uh, this is loads of fun to do this with you. Randy, thank you so much. Learning so much from you every time. Oh, it's so much fun, isn't it? Uh, we all learn from each other. It's great. Um, the, um, I guess we did um, do the things that people had mentioned, I think. Um, the 1.17 features, roadmap, xdebug with VS Code, PHP Storm. Um, um, we did... You know, let, let's see if the, um, let me just look at our other list that we started with. Custom commands and third-party services we did. Uh, custom Docker file we did. Web image extra pro, uh, packages. Um, the only thing we didn't do was casual web hosting. And that's, uh, that's pretty easy to try out. Let me give you a link to that if you want to, if you want to see how that works. Uh, let me just get a link for that from awesome ddev which is how the only place i can find anything so so i did a, a screencast on it so if you want to see how that might work out for you 
um, here it is in the chat. Um, the um, uh, the uh, like I say, I'm using it for all the little sites that I have uh, that I have kept around um, over these years, and it is really snappy on a twenty dollar Linode. I did have it on a ten dollar Linode, um, but then when I got when I got like five sites on it, it was um, running out of memory, so I paid the money for a twenty dollar a month Linode, and um, it is snappy. Those sites are snappy. They don't scale or any, I mean, you know, like if they, if it got slash sodded or something, it's not going to stand up, it's going to die. But for all the little sites in our life and all the things that are not, um, you know, not super production sensitive, it is pretty nice. And you end up using all the, the normal, um, the normal techniques that you're used to using with DDEV. So that's a nice thing about it. So did I miss other questions here? Um, I think we did it. I think we did great. I can't believe your patience. I have and one, I appreciate it very one much. Thank you. Additional Thank you, maybe quick question. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, one thing is um, we use like a tool like Browser Sync when we're developing yeah, yeah, themes. Yeah. And like, is there a way to sort of add additional port forwarding through the web container? So are you using browser sync already with yes. data? Yes, yes. Uh, so you're using, in so there, there's, there's a nice recipe on Stack Overflow um, oh, that uh, tells how to do it. So um, we'll just uh, go there and uh, go to Stack Overflow and browser sync and uh, if it's related, I really enjoy using DDEV share um, when I need <clears throat> to show the website on my machine to other people. Yeah, DDEV share is a good technique. Um, so I think this is the, this is the one good one. Box on that. There we go. <laughs> so there's the, the browser sync. Uh, I think this is, the, this is the one that's the best answer uh, recently. Um, I will uh, I will paste this here. Um, yeah, DDEV share is really nice. It uses ngrok, and you can just show somebody your project. Um, with, you know, Git with Gitpod, you can also just give them the URL to the to the um, thing that That's, you're using. Well, you can actually also run DDEV share from uh, yes, Gitpod. Can. It will work yes, as well. Can. <laughs> although you don't need to don't, share your uh, but why why would you do that when uh, so when you already because, have a, a wide open port that you can just show them on GitHub. isn't the port still uh can you share the website without sharing yeah. the workspace I don't let's remember. try it let's try it okay so here we are um let me share my screen so that i don't go off into the weeds again Okay, so here we are, um, and uh, here I have this running, and I should be able to go to the ports, right, which are right here, and the one that's um, 8080 is the one I want, right? Yeah, in the middle, five down, two down. That one right yeah, there. Here we go. And On the I can, little earth. Um, unlock oh. that. No, no, you want it, it the opposite, I think. Uh, well, Everybody, see if you can hit that page and install Drupal for me. Can you um, copy? I'm gonna, yes, I'm going to paste it. Yes, I'm going to paste that. See if you can, see if you can hit that. Page isn't working. Can you oh, try the uh, the opposite of the of the lock thing? Yeah, I can. Let's try that. So here I am. I thought I was un. It's I don't know why it's weird. Oh, it's backwards. So it was yeah. set up right to begin with. So you should be able to hit that again and install yeah, it works. on my site. Yeah. So yeah. So it was open by default, or or I had allowed it earlier. Might have been. Uh, but yeah. So it showed open, and yeah, the the icon is showing me what I can do with it, not its current state. 
Yeah. So um, yeah. So I cannot go to your workspace, but I can definitely uh, exactly. go to public exactly. ports. Yeah. So that's probably if you're using Gitpod, that's probably more efficient than DDEV Share. But DDEV Share is there for everybody all the time, and it works great. So let me just show you DDEV Share, so that you know. Um, so if I do a um, a DDEV Share here, um, it's going to oh. Oh, we got to add ngrok. Well, maybe we don't need to add ngrok. Um, Should have a list of things that are good to add. Um, I, um, here, let me just uh, let me just do it on my local machine. Um, I'm going to do a um, make sure that this is running, and I will do a ddev share on this and. Um, it had a complaint, um, but I don't think the complaint is very important. Um, oh, I haven't configured my token on here. So you should be able to go to this URL um, and so see if you can hit that URL and see if it takes you to my D9 site dot two so hope we don't take down your computer yeah right yeah oh i'm getting lots of requests through there so it must be something like working but it looks like i um oh there, yeah. there comes mine Loading. there it is new mommy so that's a data share is a technique that lots of people don't know about it's really really easy to use all you have to do is brew install ngrok or install ngrok however you want. Um, that's just the DDEV project that's on my on my local machine here. So, and I got too many connections. I think you need to. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it looked like I haven't even installed. I have a paid account, but on this machine, I haven't even put the token in, so it uh, it'll hit them pretty fast. Yeah, so it's recommended in Ngrok, even if you have a free account, to sign in because that's that will right. allow more that's flexibility. Right. Yep, and I don't have uh, I don't have that, so um, that's um, yeah, very cool. So okay, we still had one or two more questions. So if there's any more, we'll just keep at it. But uh, um, your call. Do you know of any additional uh, performance gains in Docker and Mac? The, uh, okay, so the traditional problem with Docker Desktop on the Mac is that it has kind of a two-layer file share technique. And um, DDEV and all of the tools like it have the actual workspace files on the host, and they share those into the container and on... Um, and on um, Docker Desktop, that's a two-level thing. And on the Mac, it just has never gotten very fast. So the technique that I recommend to everybody on Mac or traditional Windows is to uh, enable NFS. And that's in the docs. You just search, per, per, search for performance in the docs. And NFS makes a huge difference. Um, so... Uh, the M1 release that they just released today while we were on this call uh, or right, you know, 10 minutes before or something is actually really fast. Um, I didn't get it, but I was working with a, um, with a experimental release that I think is the same thing. And it was really quite a lot faster. And I'm going to be interested to see if maybe you don't even need NFS with that. Um, so on the M1, there might be an answer. On uh, on the um, on the traditional Mac and traditional Docker desktop, unfortunately, with the um, with where they're thinking right now, they haven't made progress. They they went down a big rabbit hole last year um, with a syncing technology that um, all syncing technologies are going to have. Um, reliability problems and they had the they had the reliability problems even though the the performance was amazingly wonderful for certain 
for most use cases, but then all of a sudden it would crash on you and it'd be wrong. Um, or it would, it would um, you know, mess up your actual data, um, which is not what we want to do. Um, so the, the issue is uh, the open issue on this, on the Docker for Mac issue queue has about 2000 comments on it now. And unfortunately, they're just all people griping. Um, the answer for now is use NFS and hope for the best. Um, I think they're going to come back to it. I think they may just have gotten exhausted by the, the search. They've tried a bunch of things. They won't, they, they won't do native NFS because it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, file IO sync or, um, notifications it doesn't have i notify um, which is really important to front end people so so that's the yeah on the mac it's it's kind of unfortunate because windows is making such huge strides and on wsl2 we have such amazing performance because it's real linux and the mac mac apple doesn't um, seem to care about you know, like having Linux or anything like that. They, that's not in the world that they're working toward. Um, they want a controlled environment that they're, you know, that, that is predictable and doesn't have all kinds of different user interface things in it. And there's good reasons for that kind of thinking. But for us as developers, people are jumping ship all over the place and leaving the Mac to go to do what WSL2. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you, everybody. It's just a huge treat to have you here and your patience. And it's so much fun to work with you. And uh, do come on over to the DDEV channel on uh, Drupal Slack. We're there all the time. And come into Stack Overflow and uh, everywhere else. And it'll be wonderful. So happy to follow up anything that was left hanging here. Thanks so much, everybody. Take a break. <laughs> All right. Great. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.